Ahoy out there. Welcome to the Knights of Nerditude podcast for all things nerd. Uh, today is a very special con on classic. Uh, I'm John, uh, your captain for uh, this evening's voyage. Uh, I'm here with... Clearly something not terribly nautical and fascinating just happened. I'm at a loss. It's Chris. Uh, permission to come aboard, Mr. Sh- uh, John. <laughs> Are you going to give me permission oh, to come uh, aboard? Oh, yeah, granted. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, it's me, Mr. Sam. And uh, I, Now that we're all here, uh, we're not all there. It's Sean. Well, fellas, I'm going to set the table for you right now. Uh, it's April 1804. <laughs> Napoleon is master of Europe. Only the British fe- fleet stands in front of stands before him. Uh, most importantly, oceans are now battlefields. We are doing tonight, master and commander, the classic 2003 Three. movie. Yeah, 2003. 2003. Wow, really should have gotten that one down. <laughs> uh, starring Russell Crowe, Paul Bettany, and a, a boatload of others. A hobbit? It's gonna be a no hobbit. Sh- yeah, there's a yep. hobbit. Yep, I got a hobbit, got uh some other dudes. Um <laughs> wow. This bunch of let's, other let's dudes be honest, this. John's not lying on that. There's a whole bunch of other there's dudes. There's a whole bunch of people where I'm like, I don't know you. No, it's an incredible <laughs> collection though of people you see in other stuff, especially if you're oh. like big into British TV. Yeah, I was gonna mm-hmm. say, like, there's a lot of like British oh, TV oh, people yeah. in this. A lot of British TV people. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's people that you know where they were in. Do you know the characters in this one or the other one? No, not really. Although it does tell you at the end who everyone's name and role was. Um but mm-hmm. when I say role, I mean job on the boat, which is the most important thing. Mm. Um anyway, guys. <laughs> I had so I had recommended this one. Uh, I think coming in, Sam hadn't seen this in like 20 years. This is I, the 20th anniversary of the movie, by the way, in part. Yes. Uh, the inspiration for doing this. Which which we have stuck to, I think, in a couple of our classics. What? Like the, the 20th year? anniversaries. Yeah. Or, or decade anniversaries. Yep. Uh, now, Chris, you had you said you had seen it recently, but weren't like a big weren't like a big fan uh no i wouldn't say i don't want to say a huge fan like i respect the movie for what it is okay you know there's certain there are certain aspects of this movie that are absolutely phenomenal you gotta be in the right mindset to watch master and commander like it is it is a two hour 20 minute movie about nautical warfare yes and you know (laughs) you just gotta set yourself like (laughs) like there's the flow there's flows to these (laughs) movies okay and you have to understand there's like the base outline of every nautical movie ever created. It is action. And then it's what is it? Uh, it's a, lot, a bunch of seamanship. And then there's like a lull period. A and then there's a bunch like a big thing at the end. And you just you just got to understand. That's why you need to be in the mindset for it. It's you know, it's like it's the best way to describe this is it's almost a dad movie. Oh, this is a hundred percent. Uh, is... I'd say this is just like just maybe hitting the dad movie, or like right on the cusp of being a dad. No, movie. this is a hundred percent. I dad could, movie. I, I think I, I know that, but there's other like dad action movies that are flat action throughout the whole. Oh thing. yeah, oh and yeah. And that's, and that's kind of where but, I would stick this. But this right is below that. This is a dad movie, as in like it's about you know sailing ships, and every dad's like. Oh man, I love sailing ships. Let me tell you uh, all about sailing ships. It, Age of Sail is very dad. Oh yeah, this is the movie where where our 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 dads are split would be split on this. Yeah. There's no way my dad would sit down and watch this. All right, all right, okay. Yeah, as, I think as, the first a... time I saw this was at home. Must have been when the DVD came out, and I was not super into it to be honest as a 13 or 14 year old at the time uh but have just come to love this even more but yeah i think it's not apollo 13 it's not like the fugitive you know like it's not the like saturday afternoon dad movie like Mm -hmm. this is uh you're you're settling in yeah and you gotta kind of it's not a uh edge of your seat type of movie well some parts some parts are but like the whole movie no 
I will say this, though, Sean, for yes. you and me, this yes. is the quintessential Our Dad movie. Okay. Well, your dad read, would probably sit there and no, watch oh, this for our dad read the day book. For he read the book. He read the... Of course he did. All, how many books are there in this? There's, oh, like, there's like, like 30. 12 books. <laughs> no, no, there's more than 12. Like, there's an insane amount. And he had them all in hardcover. I'm pretty sure they're still in our... Uh, no, no, he got, he, we got rid of them. Oh, you did? Yeah. Wow, why? Because uh, he read all of them, and oh, okay. he had some people come by. Books, books take which up is like really called, the most dad reason. It's like I well, read take up books. this thing called space. Uh, for those of us who are not hoarders, you know, <laughs> space is kind of needed <laughs> to fit things like humans and food. So um, importantly, uh, this is based on uh, what's known as the Aubrey Martin uh, Matter. Oh, sorry, Matterin, uh series, which. Sean's, I think, looking up the number there. There's a lot of books, and this movie oh, yeah, has yeah. no single book. It's, it's the so Master Commander and Far Side of the World are like the first two books, mm-hmm. and I believe this is like mostly Far Side of the World because at one time our dad on a vacation had uh, Far Side of the World a book on tape, so I know a little bit about that book, and this is very similar to it. Like the key difference is that instead of a French privateer, it's an American one. Mm-hmm. Oh right. yeah, 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 War of eighteen twelve. They, they pushed back. Was it? They pushed forward the time, so it would be the French. Back. The, it was back. That's yeah. right. Because it's supposed to be War of eighteen twelve. Yeah. Um, but but they they still back. kept it kind of because it's an right. American made ship. Right. Right. And they, they yeah. bring bring that up. But yeah, there have been twenty one books in the series. <laughs> yes, there are. A lot. So imagine reading twenty one novels about sailing. Yeah, yeah that's right. Sounds, that's that's our dad. That, that, yeah, that was our dad. <laughs> that's like reading Foundation five times in a row. <laughs> Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, did you still finish it? You huh? were reading it a few months ago. Did you finish it? Uh, I finished it a while ago. Oh, okay. All right. I've All I've right. read that like a couple times through. All right. That's that's <laughs> okay. love the foundation, right. dude. All right. Yeah. Importantly, I don't think any of us have ever I've ever read any of these, right? No. I, mean, I guess God, other no. than your book no. on tape, which that's just like an incredible like your dad move too of like getting a book on tape and just like forcing you all to listen to it on vacation. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's, that's how I've uh, technically read uh, farewell to arms. Yeah. Farewell to arms <laughs> and uh, the Hobbit. <laughs> First time we read, I read the Hobbit was through book on tape, Yeah, which is weird. Cause our dad hated the Lord of the Rings. Well, you did go cross country and this was no, not the type of country. music. It was just out West. It's... No, you drove, uh... we didn't drive there. I thought you no. moved. We flew from, we flew. But oh, stuff. Yeah. Your stuff. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. I thought you guys living, all drove. Living out there, I mean, we were driving from, like, Denver area up to, like, Yellowstone, which is a long drive. Yeah, what's that, eight like, hours? Probably more. Yeah, it's, like, probably, like, ten. It's yeah. brutal. Oh, yeah. In the, oh. SUV, in the SUV? Uh, In the uh, the Ford Escape. <laughs> yeah, tight. Five <laughs> Explorer <laughs> shopping. Sorry, the escape. Escape. Guys, this is, this is way too much discussion <laughs> about <laughs> land travel. <laughs> yes. 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 particularly thank you Mr. and John. it's not island travel <laughs> <laughs> right yeah unless you're crossing a very narrow island it's not really so, germane to the to the movie here um yeah sam so i i've got a bit of a hot take on this movie okay this movie is a superhero movie okay that is first, a hot take first of all captain jack He's a fucking superhero. Like the guy's like perfect in every way. Even his like his uh, bad, uh, his like uh, downside to him is he's just too dedicated to the job, <laughs> which is like always a superhero. Like it's like, oh, you're too busy being a superhero to care about your family or something mm-hmm. like that, or your friends. And it's just, like he's totally a superhero. I'd say even you could extend it to the ship itself too, the HMS surprise. Yeah. It's like, this is such a superhero movie. Like even some of the tropes are kind of superhero. Like the, the lines are kind of quippy in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the, the bad guys are kind of just like nebulous and not really well defined. <laughs> They're just like, do you need, French. do you need <laughs> definition of a French? Well, there's, there's no, like, oh, no arch nemesis. It's just like 
this and, and like and, 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 oh. and the bad guy's just him but French. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And, well, and I'm I not, mean, you I are on put, the far side of the this. world. I'm not criticizing it for it. It's just, I find it an amusing little thing I noticed where I'm like, this is just a superhero movie. Yeah, it's not exactly when you dissect the plot really that complicated. Maybe the one sort of like um, inverting thing is that, you know, they get the shit beaten out of them so early on that. Oh, yeah, you it's know, like immediate. Oh, yeah. Right. That, and, that opening scene is like awesome yeah. yeah oh the battle scenes of this no Amazing. like when they're like, like it's all battle. foggy and he's like looking and you're like and, and you, you even it. see it and you're like wait what was that yeah you see something and like, you're just like i don't know what and that like, was he, he jumps the gun for good reason like like luckily there was something there but like <laughs> yeah that whole sequence was amazing right and just the, like the fire lights up in the fog yep. and the cannons yeah look at them they like, a, lot like, this, a lot of this a lot of this stuff yeah. was was like a lot of this stuff yeah. about this movie was wicked good so the this for obvious reasons won best cinematography at the oscars this gets got nominated for 10 i thought it was got nominated for, it was got nominated for no, 10 it got nominated oscars. for cinematography Dur- and sound no it got nominated for oh, a couple yeah, of no, things like, a was, bu- it, no 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 it, like a bunch uh, of best things. picture best well, director it had a yes. very unfortunate timing of coming out when it yeah. did. Mm. As I brought up to Sam, movies that came out I the mean, same. Year I mean, as Billy this. Boyle came out great. Boyd, 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 sorry, not Boyd. Yeah, so Boyd. The, in 2003 saw movies such as X2 came out in 2003, Finding Nemo, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. Yeah, but this little thing. and. <laughs> Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Those four movies came out this same year. Yeah. And like you can argue those are the four best of those like properties. Well, like, it, yeah, well it's cuz Master and Commander and it, and it, it doesn't get enough credit I don't think mm-hmm. because you had Lord of the Rings Return of the King got 11 nominations which is tied for the most yeah. with 3 other yeah, three two other, other two other movies just three total. Yeah. But then there's this with 10 and you're like holy crap yeah. why why yeah. why is this kind of it's not it's well it's almost it's a, a forgotten of, movie it's a lot of technicals that's why yeah uh, but which, but picture cinematography picture, yeah. sound director yeah. i mean costume design technical that's that's yeah. technical production it, design i'm sure a lot of yeah. it was technical sound, sound, it, sound editing it didn't have acting like or anything like that art direction art yeah which all are, the pr- technical pr- stuff which this movie is beautiful it looked amazing. Mm. It sounded amazing. Like the ship like crashing in the storm. I brought it up to Sam. That whole scene of the ship in the storm going around um, South America. like The horn? The yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a real ship in a real storm. So there was a ship going around circumnavigating the world at the time of production. And they actually went, like, when it was going around South America, they flew down there and they filmed it. And like that's a real ship in a real storm. Hmm. Like that's so cool. Like the sails and everything. Everything. So yeah, importantly, they did um like build a ship, like a custom ship for yeah. this. I think mm-hmm. it was even built in like Connecticut or Rhode Island, I wanna say. I think it might have been built in Rhode Island, actually. Really? Where? Um you sure not Mystic? Maybe Mystic. It would probably be Mystic, if anything. Um, uh, more of our childhood going down to Mystic Seaport, right? And then they <laughs> essentially just uh, brought it through the canal to like a, a, a not a dock, but like they filmed it in Mexico in like a giant tank, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And this is really cool. It, it really yeah. looks it. I mean, you know, it's not like there's no CGI in this movie, but there's a shitload of practical effects, and mm-hmm. like it looks incredible. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It really does. It also I, makes you respect like. Damn, the ship's still floating. Because <laughs> after that first battle, you're oh, like, yeah. hot damn. The whole first level of the this ship like just got Two and a half up. feet and uh, holding still. Yeah. yeah and they're holding yeah. steady or whatever. Yeah. Uh, That's a lot of water. <laughs> That's a ton of water. That like, was a lot of water. H- half of the fun of this, and you mentioned that line like, two and a half feet and holding still. Half the fun of this is just trying to figure out what the hell anyone's is saying. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. Because you're just like, okay, this is both nautical terms and thick British accents. Yeah. 
like <laughs> thick British accent. <laughs> like my favorite parts of this is whenever they're like Sow by Southwest. Sow, sow. Yes, I was just going to say that. <laughs> the yeah. directions. Yeah, there's sow a guy by who I don't know what his role is. He's some kind of like NCO type who the guy who's just always yelling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the guy, the guy with the whistle. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh-huh. you, you know, you know what? He's not in the second half of the movie. He's what? not. You remember the guy who's like barking orders? That, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, the gunny. Yeah. He's non-existent for the second half of the movie. Really? You don't hear him. You don't yeah. hear him screaming around. Huh. Yeah, because um, like that, that's like the other thing is like ninety percent of the the lines of this are just incoherent yelling. Oh yeah, like, right. Uh, yeah, it's just people yelling at yelling orders out, which I don't know why. I'm just a massive sucker for. I just can't <laughs> help it. Oh, like, like all um, these like submarine movies, or remember that Greyhound one, Chris? The, yep. the Tom yeah. Hanks one. It's like that's that's literally that whole movie. It's like that and Tom Hanks trying to eat like ham and eggs. On a, on a <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, but I was going to say that my favorite character in this movie is the cook. Oh, yeah. I don't the, think the, I understood a single it word. It will he be said. ready when it's ready. Yeah, other than like that. <laughs> Curmudgeonly cook. Yeah, like, he's just like miserable, but like, I mean, there's that one. And he's like, he's, he's always in like the best head. scenes. Yeah, but, of he's this. Like, yeah. but he's like the best fighter on the ship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like the best scenes of this is when the officers are just drunk. Oh, oh yes. yes. Because it's like Those the only times you understand anyone is when Russell Crowe is drunk. <laughs> 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 Which I don't know if Russell Crowe was actually drunk, but kudos. He pulled off where it was like, oh, yeah, this guy's drunk right now. <laughs> and like he's like, OK, here's what our plan is. And they're planning battles while just drunk. <laughs> yeah. Like you really understand to the like day to day part of the ship, too. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously. Chris, you hit on it earlier of that, like a tremendous part of the movie is like, okay, there's a couple bits of action and then there's a lot in between because that's what it is. And this is already like an incredible, you know, (laughs) this is already like way over dramatized of like what the, you know, slice of life normally is like, it's way less interesting on top of this, but like. The only joy you really have is like just getting like loaded with your bros at the end of the night, <laughs> <laughs> having some grog and rum, and singing some sea shanties. Exactly, just like you know, yeah. laying it in get... a hammock next to like twenty other dudes. Everyone stinks. Yeah, what, what it what was nice, and I think I think certain movies f- not falter at that. I think they try to make it a statement piece, but it, it doesn't sit so well with audiences. Is a lot of the times on these like seafaring movies, they'll 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 show an, a long period in the movie, eh, 10, 12 minutes, give or take. But they'll be, you know, slow, like no wind and they'll show depressing scenes, not depressing, so, but like slow, low, low, no moving scenes for like yeah. 15 minutes to get the point across that there's no wind in the yeah, sails. A cabin fever, cabin fever esque. But the, the thing I think with this movie is Did you get my quote now, Sam. My opening quote was the last line of the Muppets Treasure Island uh, cabin fever song. All right. Well, the thing with this movie is there is that moment where that you get like a few moments of there being like no wind. Agreed. But they didn't do it for like a long period of time. They they altered. They set a scene with the captain and the doctor where it was a little bit more levity. Um, or, or, or serious tone where it didn't give you this, like, oh, this is boring, let's move on, type cabin fever feel. It well, was it, it was a nice, it was a nice, well, it's it was, a nice change from typically what they do. They gave you a nice little, I don't want to say, like, bipolar thing, but they gave you, like, different kind of speeds. Well, that, yeah, that was all centered around the Jonah plot. Yeah, exactly, which which in itself is a boring plot, <laughs> Yeah, but it, they made it's it like, in a such a way where it's like, we have to do this, let's just get through it, <laughs> and and kind of make it in such a way where we don't lose audiences, because that, if anywhere, if there was a point where any, like, anyone would have checked out, it's probably in that, in that kind of gap. Yeah, it's like, they didn't really establish that character well enough for me to be like, either be happy when he dies or care when right? he dies. Right. You know? I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I felt like that with every character in this movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nobody's well established. No one Other is well established like, no, you, you know faces. It's like, oh, he's Do the Marine. I? He's the Marine. Well, <laughs> there's certain things. You know the, 
the like the EXO. I I right? know like four or five characters. I've seen this once, so so it's, I, it's yeah. Russell you Crow. it really comes out on the fifth or sixth viewing. Of like this, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not yeah. even really joking like, that much. I, I was say like halfway through this movie, I was like, hey, Pippin's in this movie. Like I didn't even realize he was in the movie till halfway through. Which he he has a nice South by Southwest. Oh, yeah, he's got great. the perfect. <laughs> and he's like smiling he's just, while he's doing yeah. it. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> but like even the point point where like Paul Bettany's character gets shot, I was like, if he dies, he dies. I don't care. So so that that kind of let's uh, kind of lead into that. What do you think of Paul Bettany's character? So boring. Really? Really? Yo, oh. every character in this. I sucks. I thought it was. I thought his character was awesome. He's he's no. my favorite character. Right? He's I, he's, so he's boring. one. I think that there's just. The, the, the one he, he provides like this almost comical relief. Well, like like he's he's clearly there for some of the times just to be to stand in the audience to be like, okay, guys, let's just slow down and explain what the hell just yeah, happened. Exactly. But it's but there's like <laughs> this one scene that just really has to be kind of laughing in such a way where it's like he's they're not going to the Galapagos and he's upset. Yeah. But mm-hmm. then they have this guys. We have a training montage in this movie, by yep. the way. You <laughs> yes, know that? We, do. we have a training montage. But as they're doing it, it's just cannons going off. And he's just like fishing on a dinghy, just trying to <laughs> yeah, do research on the <laughs> thing. And I'm just like laughing as like just cannons and smoke are 10 feet away from him. Yeah. And he's just doing his research, being his, uh, what, what do they he's call a it? Naturalist. naturalist. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> I, I, loved it. I, I loved really, it I really like Paul Bettany in this. I, I will agree with you, Sean. It's like early on, it's like tough to really understand his point to the movie other than just kind of like maybe being a little curmudgeon at times. I feel yeah, like, like Russell Crowe's like old time friend and he's a doctor and that's pretty much what I got. Yeah. And I mean, he's Spanish by birth. Not that that really ever comes up in the thing, but like yeah. he's supposed to be, and I guess he's also like the intelligence officer on board. Like he does he's a science like a officer. bunch of different stuff. He's like the mm-hmm. science officer. Yeah, but there's like other stuff too that I think he yeah. is actually supposed to or has roles in. But I mean, it's like you can't, you know, it's like you, know, you can only fit so much into the movie. You know, it's like I remember mm-hmm. like the Harry Potter stuff. Like you know, there's all these little mini things that happen. And it's like, well, that's never going to all be in the movie just because mm-hmm. you can't fit it all in. But this is like one of those things where if this was like a 10 hour like mini series, I think it would also like fucking rule because you could like expand upon people a little bit more and like get a little bit more insight into like his character, like Paul Bettany's character, um, Matterin's a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I do you, enjoy like how they, what they do with him, like especially when he gets shot is you have that whole scene where he's like operating, operating on himself. himself. Yeah. Because it's like, because they set him up as like, he's the nerdy guy. Like, he's he's in all these, like, butch sailors and, you know, manly sailors and stuff. And he's this, like, nerdy naturalist. And you just have that scene where it's like, oh, but he's also secretly a badass. Because he's, he's like, everyone else is getting queasy in that scene. And he's the only one doing surgery on himself. Right. Pulling a bullet out of himself. So I, I I just enjoyed that. I I feel like I've seen that mo- that like that exact scene in like multiple movies of like it's, somebody it's, operating it's not, on themselves. It's, it's not it's not uh, unique. Yeah, but I think it, it works for the character. It's like sort of established. I'm like, okay, yeah, he's bookish and he's a naturalist and he's not a like a a, yeah. a, a, sol- uh, a sailor like everybody else or a marine or anything. But like, don't look down on him. Right. He's he's still. He's a tough, he's a tough nut. Mm. Just because he likes to, you know, collect different lizards. Beetles. Which Beetles. I just flightless birds. It's actually kind of like my favorite part of the scene is whenever he's on the Galapagos. Yeah. That whole sequence is pretty great. I mean, including, including the surgery scene. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I don't know. There's part of, part of my, part of the alert for this too, is just how, this was a movie that was made in a time with like big budget, you know, I mean, they could have done CGI. Not that this was small though. Yeah. This wasn't a small budget. Oh, this was a massive budget. Like 150 million. Right. Which I mean, even 20 years ago is like really Mm, big. Yeah. I mean, Lord Uh, of the Rings was not that much further. But yeah, but that was, yeah, that was only three movies though. That's no, 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 no. I mean, the third movie's budget was not much more than this. Oh yeah. 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 
but like the fact that like this will more or less never happen again like we'll yeah. never like we'll never really see anything like this there is like such a high ha- reliance on the practicals for this it'll kind of budget. happen again it's just it's gonna take a while um just because this technically flopped at the box office or it, it didn't flop but like it, it didn't it made do more, well. it, made it, money. It, it, made it wasn't money. like gangbusters you know it, i mean it, you're putting a lot up yeah you so know, it's you could have just made another spider-man yeah it's 150 million budget when it made box office 212 which yeah, if you a, include that's, that's not making its money back, no though. that's like you have to that yeah, the like, budget is never including with marketing at least breaking even. well yeah but they're you're only getting 50 cents of the dollar of the net any of the right. gross so, so this did not do well in the box office which i mean say what it is i mean the you know the only other movie to compare to is the first ca- uh uh pirates of the caribbean movie which also used um practical effects when it came to the show right. but like not to the extent of this movie but still um and that movie did much better than this one in the right. box office uh, it's just it's really tough for me to say that they would ever like attempt oh, i mean they, man. this 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 also came out two weeks before yeah <laughs> yeah like that's that's a rough that's yeah a rough came out two slot. weeks before what lord of the rings yeah. return of the king yeah yeah this, yeah. this, and this, this, this was this was back fail. this is back when not as many people what? saw it like the people prepared to go see lord of the rings like, well this waiting the, in the lines the, and everything well this was the third movie to come out yeah so everyone knew what to expect yeah. so yeah everyone was so two weeks before that. it's like i'm not gonna go see this yeah. no this plus, this movie plus was lord of the rings too or you know return of the king is what three and a half hours yeah it's a long you know one. i know me personally i wanted to go see that one again like i think once i went with my friends and then i went to go with my dad another time so you're talking about seven hours in the theater Mm-hmm. For you know a couple weeks, like it's gonna be a tough sell to go see what's Master Commander two and a half hours, two twenty, two twenty, yeah, to go sit in the theater again for another two and a half hours. Which mm. to to like based on movies today, two hours and twenty minutes is like I feel it's like normal. that's every movie. It's normal. <laughs> every movie's just over two hours nowadays, which sucks. I hate it, but um, I just because. Of all the everyday sailor stuff in between, this movie to me personally felt very long, very like very long. Right. Yeah, I mean it's slower paced, especially compared yeah. to like you know stuff today. Like I mean it's yeah. it's or even it's to intentional. its direct competition, um, Pirates. Pirates. Yeah, right. I, actually, I'm curious how long Pirates is. The first one was just shy of two hours, I think. So this so this came out at the end of the year too. Yeah, yeah, November. I wonder how Pirates much of that of is like Pirates of the Caribbean of the is summer. actually longer oh, really? of a movie oh, than good. this yeah. movie. But Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean came out must have come out in the summer, right? Yeah, uh, it yeah, seems probably. like a summer movie. Yeah, so I wonder I wonder how much of it too is like you know yeah, we're not June, we already June saw the that, yeah. yeah, we already saw the sailing movie, you know. Yeah. Right. It's just bad timing. It just it's yeah. for me. It's just really unfortunate given what it is. They've uh, they've been trying to make sequ- a sequel to this forever. I guess they're working on doing a prequel to this movie right now. Uh, yeah, they they had announced that they it was in development. I think right. it was in twenty two or twenty one. Twenty one June. Yeah. So you know, twenty one. It's probably probably not. You know, <laughs> on the front burner. Can right. you top this? That's I, that's. I'd say yeah. Yes. I mean, like, well, <laughs> you know that they're going to do a ton of CGI. Do you though? I think you have to have the boat. Like, yeah, I, I yeah, mean, but you I have to know. have you have to have CGI nowadays. Like it's yeah. it's it's, it's I, almost an I, obligation. You know, honestly, I feel like it's probably going to be like not as much as you think. Yeah, you know, I, a I, lot I of hope. it is going to be shots of people standing on the boat. Yeah, yeah, but it's just. I like know how much CGI gonna, do you I, really need? The CGI well, is in if the you have sequence. the boat, like right, yeah. might as well shoot on the boat, right? Well, you but, want the practical explosions and all that other right, stuff, right? But it's, but the the bat the CGI all comes down to battle sequences, like the firing of the uh, cannons. No, like, like, in, in this in this movie, like a lot of the battle sequences was actually CGI. Yeah, yeah, and it, I think it, it looks good. Same. I mean, yeah. I don't I don't yeah. think anything. Like CGI wise, and maybe again, this is just the time, but like it's incorporated very well. Like it stands up 
I think really, really well. Like it looks good. <laughs> you know, like there's a lot of movies we've revisited here that, you know, maybe even more like five or 10 years before this, but like the CGI just doesn't really look good anymore, especially like with 4k televisions, you know, oh, yeah, the yeah, mummy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The mummy returns was on yeah, last night and I mummy, it's just not that mummy good. Was, mummy was what? 2001 or 2000. 99. Okay. Yeah. So, so right in that timeline yeah. there and you know, I don't know. I, I think it, it's, it's, it's weaved pretty well into the rest of the yeah. movie. Um, well, when, uh, when CGI is used such, such as in this movie where it's like weaved into the movie with a lot of practical, um, I, it, you don't really notice as much as like, we'll go with the mummy. Cause we just brought it up where one of the characters is literally CGI. Like you right. notice that mm-hmm. that's the difference. Um, yeah, so I also liked it. Did you see the Oscar thing, by the way, with the, um, sorry, off topic here, but the Oscar picture where it's, um, the rock meets with Brendan Fraser backstage. No, because Brendan Fraser was in the prime of his career. Yeah. In the rocks. Was first the movie beginning. was yeah. the mummy returned. It right. was just a nice little, yeah, huh. nice little clip. Nice little picture. Yeah. Op there. Anyway, sorry. Side. I'm just side. done with the rock though. <laughs> not until just, fast. Especially no, he's not, he's, 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 not he's, 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 he's done. He's especially everything coming preference. out about black Adam, where he's like, he almost like, I don't want to say single-handedly, but he had like a big hand in killing yeah. that yeah. entire. He, yeah, he, how about he held the uh, what's, WB? What's his name? I know this has nothing to do with Napoleon in the high seas, but how about the the Rock doing a coup d'état on the DCEU? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like what? I, I it's just amazing. But um, anyway, Russell Crowe. Yeah, <laughs> Russell Crowe, who's oh yeah, in. yeah. We 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 get like a uh, sexy Russell Russell Crowe in his prime before it got all fat and old. All right, so was that a wig? That was totally a wig, guys. Right? Maybe that, some extensions. Uh, hair extensions. I, I should I, say hair. I extensions. don't know. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's not extensions. like he doesn't have hair. Right. Yeah. Right. But that was hair extensions. Yeah. Like, at the very least, it was dyed. And it's not, like that's yeah. not like it did not look natural for him. Yeah, that's, okay. that's my take on sexy Russell Russell Crowe, as Sam put it. I'm just I'm just saying, like this was prime sexy Russell Russell Crowe. <laughs> like there's that scene, like when they're dead in the water, and he's like only got the blouse on. It's like he's got the Fabio look going. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, never mind. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what you guys are gonna tell me? You didn't have like a little bit of like a a, a man crush? Oh God, he there? he. Well, no, but. <laughs> Yes, he had like the Fabio, the white loose shirt. Definitely had the Fabio look. The white loose shirt, the tight pants. He had the yeah. long hair too. Just, it is blonde. <laughs> Hand me my rope tie. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. The two, the two, uh, my favorite, or one of my favorite, two of my favorite scenes in this movie is the one uh, they're just broing out and like playing their little strings. Uh, <laughs> He's playing the violin and, uh, you know, Paul Bettany's on the cello. Which, by the way, that. Russell Crowe did learn to play the violin for this movie. Because it did not look like it. No, yeah, it did. did not look like it. He, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like it looked like he was just doing as well as I would. Because <laughs> I, lo- I was looking at him like, I know, I know Russell Crowe would definitely try and learn how to do this yeah. for this movie. Because that's how I think he is as an actor. But it sure as hell does not yeah. look like he knows he, how to play this. I mean, he it's did, not obviously fact. not them, but in the you know, it's a soundtrack. In but. the soundtrack, it's him. But yeah, he he legit learned to play the violin for this role. I mean, I, I that's not unlike actors, I guess. No, it's, no, I think, you want to uh, look like you know what you're doing. But I think what's his face? Spider Man learned how to play for that um, the play movie Rent Not Rent. What the heck is the other one? Tick Tick Boom. Tick Tick, tick, boom. tick Boom. I think yeah. he learned how to play piano for that. <laughs> Yeah, you want to at least n- look like you know what you're doing. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah, but there's plenty of people who like are like, oh, I have a scene where I play a violin. Why do I have to learn? We'll just do it in post. <laughs> 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 Anyways. Um, yeah. This this was a movie. I hate to say it, guys. Like, I was bored through this movie. I know you yeah, guys are really I, I know excited. Why. This, this, this does not seem like a Sean movie. No, no it doesn't. This, this gave me flashbacks of childhood of going to Mystic Connecticut Seaport. <laughs> and just yeah. my dad being like, look at this ship. I'm like, that, that, yes, that's, a, that's a ship. <laughs> the utter terror of finding out you're going to the seaport and not the aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> 
which happened a lot. I just, I just thought you'd get a little, little bit more kick about like the naturalist. Stuff. Not really, you know. No, that's, you're, so you're more of a Paul Bettany, not a I, Ro- no, Russell Crowe. Yeah, no. Look, look, <laughs> I like Paul Bettany as a character. I've liked a lot of the stuff that he's done through the years. I did not like him in this movie. No. He was like I said, there was no character. If Russell Crowe died in this movie, I'd be like, oh, okay, moving on. Like, and that's how I felt with every character that died. Like every single character I had no attachment to. And like, how am I supposed to care about what's going on? That's what, that's what I'm, I'm not saying. saying you're not supposed to have an attachment, but like it is like about a ship of like 20 guys. Like it's almost like I know Russell Crowe is like the lead in this, but it's mm. not like he's the only dude in it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right. I, but there's a lot of people in it, but personality wise, like we're, we're talking about like, let's, let's see characters. Like it's a lot of stiff British people. Yeah. It's the same stiff British personality from one person to the next. Like they're all the same character. Yeah. But Listen, Paul Bettany's Irish. Is, they're yeah. all the they, they same character. Irish. I don't like it doesn't matter what their accent is or their heritage. Well, they're all they're drunken all sailors. Same. Yeah. So yes. Like <laughs> of I, course it's gonna be the same. Like, well, Chad, I'll, I'll back you up on this. The strength of this movie is not its writing. No. It is not ri- like and that it's, leads it's it to my ship, right? It's no, it's, it's it's the ship itself, I think, is the strength. The strength of this movie is just like the way it looks. The cinematography. Like yeah. which it won. And 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 kudos to them because they really do like set the you get a feel for the ship, like the yeah, size. It, everything and how... very much there's a, a very visceral feel to everything. You very much feel like you're there. Even hmm. like I noticed it one gives point, you scale. They they definitely had like the set in, in the cabin like set to like kind of move around because mm-hmm. at one point of uh, Russell Crowe's like handed uh, a glass of wine. He puts it on a table and you notice the, uh, the, uh, the ordinary wine. guy, the guy, um, Oh, the, yeah. the cook guy, the cook guy, he Get like it. reaches Get down it. to like prevent it from sliding, mm-hmm. but it's like almost instinctual. So you're yeah. like, Oh, they probably had this set like, kind of like kind of going, yeah. going. So he instinctually feeling Look. this, the, the set move, Reached and prevented Look, from sliding. The technicals on this movie were amazing, and I will not take it away. Yeah, this movie looked the, great. The was, writing's not yeah, great. The writing yeah. is well. I wouldn't even just say the dialogue is not like among my no favorites. Well, like, it's not like any, like, okay. Great. It's just, like the characters are very. So, what bland. part of the writing when you say writing? Uh, I mean, all the like backing up, Sean. The characters are very bland. Uh, the story is very like. You know, very A to B to C. Like we're just connecting the dots here. Yeah, but yeah. do you think having like a more eccentric captain would be better? I I I, I don't know if it's eccentric that no. I'm looking for. Uh, uh, personality would human be nice. being. Human being. <laughs> but he's, he's, he's also been at sea as, for months. As, as, as we like to, as I roll back to my earlier point, he's a fucking superhero in this. He has uh, no flaws. Just, His only flaw is he's too dedicated to the job. Well, I, I think I think when you present this to the actors and say, "Oh, do you want to be in my movie? Oh, what's it about? It's about this ship." sent out in the Napoleonic Wars on like a clearly a year long mission to hunt another ship. Oh, oh yeah, multiple. they're at sea for multiple for yeah, yeah, you're yeah, not yeah, it's yeah. not like you're gonna get a lot of <laughs> um wide cast No, I uh, yeah, you know no, but like like you personalities. Could, you could you could make this character a little bit better, but at the same time knowing the books, this is what he is in the books. Like mm-hmm. he's he is this like Uber like idealized British captain. Yeah. And also I like to point out, Sean mentioned earlier, there is like 20 of these, which, you know, going back to, this is a comic book movie, essentially. (laughs) Well, that's, I mean, (laughs) like, and and no, no dissing comic books, but like, yeah, this, this is how, when you write 20 fucking stories, this is how the characters are going to end up. They're going to be very simple. They're going to be very idealized. Uh, like all the problems are going to be very basic. Uh, just, and they certainly, you know, they certainly made this 
thinking they would make more too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like they didn't. I mean, not that they could, you know, fire off everything to begin with, but like I think this is in some ways supposed to be like an opening breath to something larger. Yeah. But were, again, yeah. too, it's a very self-sustained story. It's a self self-contained story. It's not, you yeah, know, yeah. yeah. That there's like these loose loose, you know, uh, loose ends that you know never really get tied up. You, you know, I don't want to linger on the negatives here anymore. Uh, I, I've seen that every time I watch this movie, it grows on me. Oh, yeah, for sure. No idea why. It, had, it has no it right is, to. It is a it very does. fun movie. I think it's I think it's leading I'm, once again to this is a comic book movie. I think I'm getting more it is just the a dad, fun movie. the dad area uh, of yeah. like the 40s and stuff. You know, this is where I think it, I, I'm, I'm just getting into this weird weird movie phase it's like for some reason i want to watch james bond movies now (laughs) which i've never wanted to watch before ever but chris i think what also makes it like hold up really well especially like as a tad movie on the rewatch is just how much of it is like details porn like there's all (laughs) these little things that like you start picking up like that isn't even like easter eggs it's just like oh that's why they're doing that like oh it makes sense now like you know it's it's not i don't want to make it seem like it's undercooked the first time around but you just you do get a lot more out of it on like subsequent yeah and there's also these bunch of kids characters in this who are like russell crowe's like teaching them how to be sailors and stuff yeah as they're getting chased down by the (laughs) acheron it's just like don't worry it's less than 100 yards but here's the sun it's noon. Now you have found noon. Yeah, right. It's your call. It's your class. You call you noon. It's noon, sir. I didn't get that speech. It's 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 your noon. It was ring like the, it, call noon, ring the bell. It's your class or something like that. that like it, it was like his class. He was teaching the 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 kids how to find noon on a sextant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like once they found noon, they're supposed to call noon or so. I don't know. I never figured out. It's how to sexting. ring the bells. <laughs> But like, it's they're because there's to, six like... bells on a watch, is it? <laughs> oh, it's some shit like that. Yeah. Well, I thought I know that. <laughs> I know well, that well, they no, flip no, the that's... hourglass. How long is the bell? I, I know look. that they flip the hourglass. But well, the, I get the hourglass is like, because the way you tell, uh, was it uh, latitude, is time. Yeah, minutes south. There's eight know. bells. There's eight bells on a watch, and a bell is every thirty minutes. Yeah, but there like. You go. But the sextant, you use that to find your location in the world. Right. And you have to, like, find noon. Well, where your the latitude, sun would be right? in, on noon. It's a whole thing. I don't know. I never figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's to figure out what latitude you're at. Because then you yeah. just know. Right. That's why all the pirates would, like, hang out in, like, the 40th latitude. Just be like, hey, they're going to come here soon at some point. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Can we uh, ask about? Let's just throw this out there. Yeah. Favorite nautical movies or maritime movies? Oh my god! Not necessarily. Well, I guess yeah, war movies. Pirates we can... of the Caribbean. Black Curse of the Black Pearl is up there. Yeah, that's up there. Um, <laughs> not many good ones. I mean, I mean, <laughs> Moby Dick with uh, Gregory Peck. Yeah, that is a good one. That's a good one. There's, there's that. There's, that's okay. <laughs> I mean, I recently rewatched PT One Hundred Nine the other day. Uh, I, w- I watched that in theaters. I, no, I didn't care for it. PT-109? Yeah. Like the one from the 60s? Oh, the one maybe from the no, 60s? no. I was thinking of U-571. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> but but I, I have seen the, I have yeah, it's the, the JFK Kennedy. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I have seen that one. Yeah. <laughs> Sean's got yeah. we were like, you saw that? Where did you go see it in theaters? No. That, was a, that was a long womb time for Sean. <laughs> yeah, right. Long gestation period. I'm also, uh, I'm also just sitting there like, when did that have like one of those like revival shows? <laughs> right, that's what I was thinking. Like, really? That like, was Sorry. in theaters. I, I was died? thinking the submarine U five seven one, which yeah. there's the, there's that one, which is you know bad. Yeah. Um, even uh, Matthew McConaughey's like in it. How bad could it be? Down Periscope. Down yeah. Periscope's another another <laughs> that's that naval solid. maritime movie. It's so dumb. It's great. I, well, I, my my it, two favorite uh, maritime movies are both underwater ones, uh, which are Hunt, Hunt for Red October and Crimson yeah. Tide. Which if you look at my letterbox here; they have almost the exact same poster oh I, mean, I feel God, like yeah. i feel like i've got uh master commander and greyhound is like also the same poster <laughs> is, yeah if you make a c movie it's the same movie poster 
<laughs> I mean, they're almost the same movie, but they're not. It's, what? Uh, Hunt for Red October and, and Crimson Tide. No, it's a little bit different. Guys, we're we're burying the 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 top movie, which is obviously Battleship. <laughs> they drift the damn they thing. They drifted the battleship, guys. Like, yeah, we could, we need we need to do a classic on well, that. Well, I mean, technically, <laughs> technically, like, I, I have so much to say about that. Knights of Nerditude revisit. Like even even just like like, how heavy was that anchor? <laughs> well, they must have clipped a rock or something, Sam. Uh, <laughs> It's not even the anchor weight that needs to be worried about. It's the um, ten- tension of the chain. Uh, we're, we're physics. Yeah, that Physi- too. <laughs> physics. Uh, physics. Um, Midway. So Which no, one? A, the original uh, Midway. Yeah. The Midway. I think it's 70s, right? Midway, I'll tell 60s? you, doesn't stand up as much because I mean, I think I liked that one as a kid, but now like watching it and being like, oh, this is just all archival footage. And then Charlton Heston in a plane model. Yeah, yeah. And Midway's it's very much boring. it it has the like longest day problem of oh this is just a bunch of stories it's too much yeah like there's no yeah. like actual, not even though like, like there's just no good here. action but and it's, it's also just not super the way they did it is not going to be super cinematic even though it's like a literal like it's you know the one of the biggest naval battles ever yeah it, it's it's one of those things where it's like like. I, I I get why this was a book, but like, why make it into a movie? Like, movies usually have to have a point to them, and you're just showing me things. Yeah, we should we should definitely do a war movie. Like, we could we could do war movie ones as any time, guys. Like, I would love to do a longest day <laughs> versus a bridge too far. Just 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 talk that. It one always up. it always blows my mind. Uh, Straw poll, which one's better? Oh, bridge too far. Bridge too far. Right. Okay, yeah. we're all. In it's the same an bridge. actual movie. Okay, yeah. But the like, also, day is like also bridge too far. Like at the time, most expensive movie ever made. Yeah. Yeah. It blew Incredible up a real cast. bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible cast. Or uh, the, the train blew up a real train. Oh, the train. We yeah. could talk. Oh yeah. That, if you want to talk about like a hidden gem of a war movie, yeah, the, the train. train. Uh, have you guys seen the train? No. Uh, no. <laughs> Thank you, I Dad. Don't, I don't try <laughs> to watch many military train movies that don't have Frank Sinatra in them. <laughs> but it's it's a it's a solid like it's also like very uh, it, it's a solid like anti-war movie because it's about like the French Resistance and it's got uh Burt Lancaster being like the Burtest Lancaster you can possibly think of. <laughs> It's like him just working on trains the entire time. Yeah. Um, here's here, here's a philosophical question for you. Is Apocalypse Now a nautical movie? <laughs> no. No. Does it's Brown not a boat work? for a it's not a sea. It's not a sea movie, though. Okay. But it's a boat movie. It is a boat I, movie. I guess. Do we you say know, boat I, movies I, or, or you know specifically what? war movies? I'm, I'm going to back you up here, John. That's a, that is a nautical movie. It's pretty close. I yeah. mean, you, like behind enemy, if, but like behind enemy lines, yeah, a lot of it takes place in an aircraft carrier, but it's not a boat. But it, but but like the aircraft carrier is not driving the plot. The boat, right. no, but it's essentially the boat, line boat up river is literally driving that plot oh, of that movie. God, the movie right. sucks. So you get off is, the boat, you go see a tiger, you get back on the boat, you keep African going. African Queen, a nautical movie. Yes. Okay. Uh, what are we, <laughs> by the we, same by the same rules, yeah, I have to stand by rules. what the yeah. rules I've applied. Africa Queen, definitely not. We missed, right. So was Anaconda, but we uh, we mentioned <laughs> great. We mentioned you great. You know what? I'll stand by you. That's Anaconda is a nautical <laughs> movie. <laughs> Anaconda is a nautical movie, according to Sam's logic. Well, I think in, in this case, I mean the the best nautical movie for me. Then it's got it's got to be Jaws, right? Oh yeah, that's a good one. Just as a pound for pound thing. I mean, it's yeah. not a war movie. Which I, 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 I think we'll talk. Let's let's and, limit let's limit our discussion and, to war. And war. To, bring, uh, to bring back uh, to what we're discussing, this movie, Master Commander, kind of has a lot of Jaws feelings to it, especially with the chase scenes. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because you're yeah. I mean, like the ship is almost it's almost like a monster movie or like a like a serial killer movie in some yeah, ways. Yeah, it's, like, it's very like nebulous, it and it, you it, don't really personalize the people on the other ship so it's very much the ship it does get pretty suspenseful i have to admit oh yeah like, like especially early on and like, like the first the first time they they meet in the, like the opening well, well there's sequence. there's this other the other scene where it's like they turn west and then 
the the infamous line to herself by South South by South And then he and he pulls up behind the ship, and I'm like, wait, what just happened? What just happened? And then they didn't show He's the drifting. ship in the screen. <laughs> He's drifting. He was drifting. I just, boats freak me out because they like go one way, but they're leaning another way, and it just oh, kind of yeah. freaks me out. I'm not a boat person. <laughs> um, like when uh, they they were trailing the mast behind them and they end up cutting it free and it uh, corrects itself and everybody on board is like, yay, we're not leaning anymore. And you're like, well, yeah, well, someone just died. So <laughs> well, the people underneath, can you imagine being being underneath, <laughs> being like a cannon here, on. just chilling. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh... Right. I'm, I'm chilling by this massive weighted object. If this thing falls over, it's not going to fall over. It's it's in my foot. And my foot is in the ropes. Yeah, I've seen Deadliest Catch. I know sometimes how that happens. <laughs> it's usually through neglect, but well, they, they were pretty secure. The cannons were pretty secure on these. Though. Sure. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just telling you. I'm they, just saying. The cannon balls, however. I'm just saying, like, a lot of sailors got killed by cannons just falling over on them. Yeah. <laughs> Greyhound. I'm just looking at a list here that has Hunt for October's 38th nautical movie and like a naval themed movie. And I like, I want to, I want to just shoot someone. What's number one on that list? And who das made boot. the list? Das boot. Okay. Yeah. All so right. like, clearly you like, you like, you like, you like subs. <laughs> now Periscope Blast also makes me want to kill this person, but. Where's no, Mikhail's Navy? <laughs> Where's. <laughs> yeah, does that count? I don't know. Right. <laughs> Tom Arnold, you know, Sorry. French Stewart's in that movie. <laughs> that's, you know it's going to be good. That's not Down Periscope. No, no. Down Periscope is Kelsey Grammer, right? Yeah. Uh, Mikhail's yeah. Navy is um, is uh, everyone I just said. And uh, <sighs> that's that's the the guy, the sonar man who does the dolphins. Yeah. That's Harlan Mikhail's Williams. Navy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. OK. That's Down Periscope. That's down Periscope. That yes. one, that one, I like a lot. Honestly, that like that one's stupid. Funny. It's surprisingly good for right? how it really is. dumb that movie is. Right. It's not bad. It's got Kelsey Grammer, so yeah. you know, and, and Rip Torn, and uh, what's his face, no uh, way, no way. Laura Dern's uh, mm-hmm. dad, Bruce Dern. Um, Bruce Dern. Yeah, like he's in that. Like, how bad can it be? <laughs> oh boy! All right. Master Commander. Master, Master and Commander. Is this an untouchable sky? Like I think so. You're going yes, Sam? Yeah, I think so. No, I, I mean, this is so very basic Age of Sail kind of movie. Mm-hmm. This is like very much for me the baseline. Give me something. Give me something similar, but try and make it better. I don't know. If, I don't know if they can. I, I, I think I, I think, think everybody's gonna could. be too CGI heavy on it. It's just gonna look awful. I think you could. I I think you're thinking too much into this. I I think I, uh, the, yeah, but a I movie's mean, gonna do the the same practical effects. It's just you got to work on your plot. I, I like wouldn't... there's there's about an hour and a half to to clo- well hour and a half to hour forty five minutes of this movie that could be cut out because nothing happens. I I, I don't and know. I know, John, you're laughing, but once again, I was. Bored stiff. I know. In this movie. I was that this, guy, Sean. I was yeah. you twenty years ago, right? <laughs> but I, I now that like I, but then he turned thirty. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. I'm older than John and Sam. Like I'm a dad. Yeah, like, I, I want. I'm, I'm making it absolutely there. clear. Even though I've I've been defending Sean here, I love this movie. Yeah. <laughs> like even though I'm like, yeah, the writing is the weak part of this movie. I it did not let me down with yeah. this. Movie. I I am a yes. This is uh, this can be remade because anything could possibly be more interesting than this. Did you I see mean, Heart of the Sea? I did not because I've Watch read that. I've read the book and I've heard that the difference between the book and the movie are like drastic and just like if well, you, I mean, book, you, don't you make it, movie. you make it. Yeah, but it's a true Cin- story. Cinematic. But it's just based on a true story. Well, I mean, they hit all the major plot points of the book. The whale has a machine gun. <laughs> yeah. It's actually a mecha whale. Um, <laughs> is this untouchable? Yes. I mean, yeah. if you were to literally do a remake, it just seems like wasteful. But if you were to just do more from this series in this world, yeah. And if it's like, like I said, too, if they wanted to do it like a 10 episode streamer, uh, which the big budget, you know, 10 episode miniseries is probably <laughs> even more dead than this now uh, with <laughs> the current climates in Hollywood. But uh, like, again, we probably missed that 
p- chance to like make get that in for like you know Netflix or Amazon money. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man. I mean, I I wouldn't hate coming back to this or like even just like Chris said, like just give me a age of you know golden age of sale like IP. Yeah, give it to me. I'll take it. Re- really quick, John, on your list of uh, nautical movies, where was Muppet Treasure Island? <sighs> That's a good point. Um, because you brought up like favorite nautical movies. I think Muppet Treasure Island is number one for me. The fact that my opening line was from Muppet Treasure Island just says it all. It's in the convo. It's way better than the other Tim Curry movie we talked about on that list. Mikhail <laughs> Navy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although, yeah, well, it's it's okay, Sean. Sean, here's yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, gonna yeah, frame yeah. it exactly like this. It's better than one, but way worse than another, which is Hunt for Red October. Not way worse, but just worse. It's in between. It's mid Tim Curry nautical movie. <laughs> you know, Hunt for the Red October could have used more Tim Curry. Every movie can use more Tim well, Curry. Hysterical I needed doctor. more. Yeah, I yeah. needed more people telling me that there's radiation on board. <laughs> in English, <laughs> oh. Captain. Yeah. All right. All right. Wow. Well. I don't want to, you know, sail too far on this one. So uh, perhaps at the far side of the world. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh. I also just, just random thought. I love how big the French flag is on the Acheon. <laughs> like, it's just massive. Like, there's the scene where he's on the Galapagos and it's just like, like, you can't even really tell what the ship is. You just see the massive French flag. Like, like, why? This makes no sense. But <laughs> yeah, you got hey, to go. Go you for it. If flag. you're a privateer, you know. Go big or go home. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you're not technically for you know an agent of the government, but you know, hey. <laughs> All right. Um well if you like this, uh, we don't usually just talk about one movie, but occasionally we'll do that other than our con on classics. Uh check us out normally where we kind of give a weekly blow by blow of uh pop culture. Probably get get some good stuff to talk next week. Uh usual shows but uh until then follow us on uh facebook like us on facebook we're on all the major podcast podcast platforms as you know we're also on youtube uh sometimes and uh you know available nautically (laughs) until next time bye adios